Hey friends, welcome to One Little Coder. Stable Diffusion 2.0 is out. It is an understatement to say if Stable Diffusion 1.0 was not revolutionary. Almost everybody started talking about Stable Diffusion. A lot of hacker news posts, a lot of applications were built on top of it. New fine-tuned models are being released every single day. Diffusion 1.0 or 1.4, I don't know what are they calling it now, but that was a huge, huge success in the world of generative AI and there is a new domain called generative AI that everybody is interested in. Now we have got Stable Diffusion 2.0. Why is it called 2.0? I have no clue because the previous version was 1.4. Ideally I would have expected 1.5 but then there was a controversy around runway ML about 1.5. So maybe they decided to go ahead with 2.0. But the main catch here is that now we are not getting one model which says you know Stable Diffusion but we are getting four models in this release. And in this video, we're going to dive into all those four models. What are those four models for and how you can use it in your workflow. This is not a hands-on tutorial. We're just going to go over Stable Diffusion 2.0 release. But in the future weeks, I'm going to cover one by one every single model how to do hands-on with these models. But let's start with understanding what are these four models for. The first model that we have got here is a simple text to image diffusion model. You know, maybe it's an understatement to say simple, but it is almost same like what you had before, but improved stable diffusion 2.0 text to image model. Imagine this is the next version of what you already had from stable diffusion. And as they have mentioned, now they can also generate 768 by 768 images, which is good because until now everybody was generating 512 by 512 and then they were using some kind of upscaling to upscale the image into 1024 by 1024 or 248 by 248 but here now you have 768 by 768 out of box which is a good thing the second thing that we can notice here is that now what they have tried to do is they have tried to remove nsfw not suitable for work images from the training data set itself so that's a novel approach previously what they had done is they had trained a, a set of images they have trained a model using set of images but they were trying to apply an nsw nsfw classifier on top of it that would say that this image is not suitable for work and then it will suppress the image but now instead of taking that approach training the model in itself they have tried to remove adult content so let's see how it works out but people always find different ways the examples that they have given is really amazing but i also found um, from a twitter user Danny Postma, who's known for um, uh, his generative AI experiments, that version one, this is how the version one image looks like. And this is the version two image. You can see a huge difference in the image aesthetic. Version one, while it almost looks like an art, version two looks very naturally, almost like a stock image. And it looks like this is going to be a huge game changer because in every blog post that I've read or announcement that I've read about stable diffusion or stability.ai from a venture capitalist, I've always seen them referring stable diffusion to a media AI company. Maybe this is the intention here that we want to replace stock uh, images or collaborate with stock images, but overall the images look good. And even the example images that they've given look very crispy, but we have to try it out here ourselves. So if you have not subscribed to the channel, this is a very good time to subscribe because we are going to see a lot of Stable Diffusion 2.0 in the upcoming weeks. So the first model is the newer version of text to image model. But now we have got three new models and the first one is super resolution upscaler diffusion models, which means instead of you trying to figure out different ways and different hacks to upscale a stable diffusion model or a stable diffusion image, you can use their super resolution upscaler diffusion model to upscale the image. What does it mean? So you can see on the left hand side, there is a low res 128 by 128 image that has been generated by the existing model stable diffusion model. And that has been upscaled to 512 by 512 on the right hand side using their upscale. And also now it can do 4x like four times upscaling, which means you can now generate 240, 2048, 2048 by 2048 image or even higher depending upon what is your base resolution. Overall, this is another very interesting aspect because 
a lot of people were worried about stable diffusion images because it was by default 512 by 512 and you always had to use some kind of upscaling method for you to upscale them but now you can use their newly released models for upscaling and let's see how it's going to go the most interesting aspect or for me the most exciting thing is the new depth to image diffusion model depth to image diffusion model what does it mean it means they're taking the image to image to a next level so previously what happened in image to images you give an input image and then you give a prompt and this prompt is going to use the input image and in such a way that the properties of input image is held together with the prompt text and then new image is created but one of the problem is that if you have something where you know you had to hold the rules of physics for example you have got a room interior right so you have got a sofa in there and then you want to do now replace the sofa with something else now those image to image models or whatever we were doing in terms of image to image would not consider the physics the dimensions of the room because it would just simply replace that object with some other object and uh, in a lot of business cases that may not be appropriate because you need to go by the rules of the world the physics that you need to respect with the depth to image diffusion model you can do that because the input image that you're going to give is going to create a depth map and it's going to keep the depth intact and then it's going to use the prompt it's going to replace that within by whole, respecting that depth for example if you want to know how it works if you give this as an input image Let's say your um, your prompt is something like Star Wars character. You're going to get something like this. Pineapple. You're going to get something like this. It's going to preserve the structure, the physics, or the dimensions of the image, and it is going to create new images. So this is quite, quite, quite amazing. And they've got another very good demo how or what kind of creative applications it can impact. Imagine that you have got a model who has got. Uh, let's say you tried out the model with a VR kit. So now you want to apply this to multiple different people. You don't have to now get them separately. Rather, what you can do is, as you can see, the image, the depth to image model is going to first create a depth. And then you can use that depth created image to do image to image. And then you can now replace different people and you can see how it changes for different, different people. And also I saw a very interesting tweet where somebody used a kid. So this is Radames Aina. So you can see the image of the kid and then you can see the prompt. So what the depth to image model is doing here is it is creating the depth of the kid. You can see where it is dense, where it is closer. You can see the white being a bright and also you can see where the kid is far away. Like for example, the, the body bot, bottom part of the kid or the chest, you can see the kid is far away, not like literally on the glass. You can see that being light grayish. Like this is like a, uh, a mask created but a mask is not or white or black but mask is actually you know on a scale from white to black and you can see for the given prompt which is high definition photo of a baby astronaut walking at the international space station with earth seeing from above the ground and you can see the kind of images that it has created is quite amazing because now what it is doing is everywhere everywhere you can see the kid in the same posture you can see the fingers of the kid you can see it's almost like the kid is um, you know leaning on the glass or something so it is quite amazing this is very important for a lot of cases like the case that i told you about there is an ai company called interior ai and you know that one of the problems that when they were building that um, i i could i i actually saw on twitter that while one object was being replaced in a physical environment the next object was not respecting the structure of that image uh, that was an issue and in cases like this um, where you have got a model you want to you know change their costume you have got to change their jewelry now this is going to be really amazing because now you're not just going to look at an image like a simple image but there is a depth that is created which is going to help create new images I i'm like of all the models i am super super excited by this thing because this is quite amazing so the depth to image is something that I'm not, um, I'm so excited to try out. The next thing is the updated in painting diffusion model. If you have seen runway ML, they also released a new uh, in painting model. So I don't know if this is going to be the same or it is going to be different, but the new in painting model is an improvement 
on top of the existing in painting model which you can see from the example that they have given but overall um, this is entirely a very exciting release because i was expecting one model but we have got four models and to quickly summarize the first model is the new text to image diffusion model and the second model is a super resolution upscaler diffusion model and the third one is your depth to image diffusion model which is quite quite brilliant and the fourth one is yeah the new version of in painting diffusion model which can be used for image in painting like change something from the image but overall this is this is an amazing time to be alive what a github repository you can go and check it out there they have also mentioned that they are going to release the information on api on platform.stability.ai and dream studio in the next few weeks but i am so excited to see what people are going to build on top of it also in the upcoming days i am going to explore every single model and we are going to look at tutorials how to set this up on our own machine or google collab if you are interested anything about this please let me know in the comment section otherwise i'll see you in the next video take care